What's up guys, behind me today we are going to talk about what it takes to get a realistic dream garage built in your backyard. Now, I call it a realistic dream garage because if I called it a dream garage, the internet would probably tear me apart, but you know, I think this is for an average person like myself, this is a pretty badass setup and I think that a lot of people would be not only incredibly happy with this setup, but a lot of people could bring themselves to do something like this or similar to this in their own backyard. And plus this thing is almost as tall as my house. So I think it's a, a decent garage. So we're gonna talk about three different things today and kind of, this is the video that I wish that I had going into this, just to reaffirm a couple things that I was unsure of. Uh, feel free to ask questions below as well. Um, but we're gonna head inside where we are going to talk about number one, uh, kind of the, the time frame and, and how this worked, how I picked out a company. We are going to talk about the things that I actually had to go out and do myself because even though I paid somebody to do this whole thing, but there are some things where, whether it was because of the county or because of little gaps or whatever that I just had to fill in. And last but not least, we're gonna take you on a tour, show you all the quirks and features, kind of the things that I picked out, uh, things that I avoided and that I'm gonna do myself. And uh, we're gonna give you the price because that's like the grand finale. What everybody wants is the price, right? So let's head inside real quick. The uh, spoiler alert, 12 foot tall doors and 14 foot tall ceilings. I'm gonna be that super obnoxious YouTuber who goes, guys, please like and subscribe. We all have to do it. It's what keeps our channels alive. So thank you very much for that. Now let's dig into this structure that I'm so happy is almost done. Just for those who are wondering off the bat, it is 900 square feet. 30 by 30 concrete floor. Uh, we're gonna get into all that in a little bit. So first I promised you that I would talk to you a little bit about uh, the setup, the time frame, how all that stuff worked and why I picked to have somebody build this for me, excuse me. I could have probably saved money if I would have picked different companies to do different things, maybe done a little bit of it myself, but the amount of time that I have available to do that isn't so great these days. Why do I think that it's in a lot of people's best interest uh, if they're not 100% sure what they're doing to pick a company to do this for them? Well, first and foremost, if I screwed something up in all of this space, whether it was the rafters or the height of the building or getting the poles in the ground or whatever. I don't, I write up on county code a little bit, but I don't know a ton about it. So let's say I were to screw something up. Not only would it be unsafe, uh, but I could have, you know, been out of, co say like, I think the limit on the ceilings was 20 feet from the base. And let's just say, that's only one example. Let's just say I violated that and it was 21 and a, or 20 and a half feet from the, the, the foundation. I would have had to rip this thing down and it was just kind of like thinking about it in the way that there are lots of different code things probably throughout this building that I would have to know, uh, know about and be well versed in. I figured it was better to have somebody else to do it, not only so it would fall within regulations and be safe and be well put together, but also, you know, if something's messed up, the reason why I paid them is so that I can come back to them and go, look guys, I paid you this money and this part of the garage isn't right. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen or that it has happened, but if it does, you know, I have somebody there to go, you know, like I need it fixed. So it might be a little bit more expensive up front, but in the long run, if anything happens, uh, I'm not sinking a bunch of time and money into getting this place right. So let's talk a little bit about the time frame. That's the one thing about this kind of uh, work is it takes a while. It doesn't, but it does. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in just one second. To start things off, I originally touched base with the company that built this back in November. And I told them, look, I'm interested in this. Let's get a quote together. Let's see what it's gonna be all about. This woman came and sat down with me at my house and we picked out options and kind of chiseled away into a more specific version of what this was all supposed to be. So uh, that was like November. So I think we got all the plans and like got our meetings out of the way and, and, and all the options picked out by December for the most part. And it is now going on the middle of May. So that's what, December, January, February, March, April, May, five months. So probably five to six months, they did tell me up front that it could be quite a while. They have, uh, the thing about these companies that do the whole job is they rely on subcontractors. So sometimes scheduling can be a pain, especially you know when you start the job in December and you have to worry about snow uh, and all that kind of good stuff. So that kind of transitions nicely into what kind of 
things that I have to do myself. You really kind of get to take mostly hands off of the project. Uh, I watched from right up there in my bedroom window as these guys built this thing pretty quickly. Uh, honestly, the jobs don't take very long. Like this whole structure and the siding and, and the roof and all that, I think they did that in about a weekend. The concrete was done in two days. All the different components were really quick. It's just scheduling those jobs to align with one another. That seems to be what takes the most time. There's a lot of waiting time in between. Scheduling is one thing. If you're in a site where you know, like they can't be in a certain area at a certain time for whatever reason, that's pretty much all you have to do yourself except for two other things. One. Uh, this silk fence, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing, but it goes all the way around the back. Oh, maybe I could go through this window and be lazy. This is drizzling out there, I don't wanna walk out there, but it goes all the way around the job site. And as you could tell by how it's falling over, I put that in myself. I think obviously they have to charge for their labor and everything. I think that cost me like, two, three hundred dollars to put in myself. Then on top of that, I also had to do the lines and grades. I don't think that they can do it because they're not the property owner and you have to be a property owner to get that report done on your, your yard. Uh, so it basically tells where the elevations fluctuate and where they wanna build this, how it's gonna work. That report is actually pretty expensive. It's another thousand to, thir I think it's like thir 12 or 1300. Somewhere in that ballpark, you're probably gonna end up having to pay to get that done and you have to do that yourself, which is just like a little bit of running around and coordinating. So that's really in addition, except for the fence, which you can have them do if you want. It's you know really easy and cheaper if you do it yourself. But in addition to that, all that you really have to do is plan and make a couple phone calls and you know, every once in a while, give them a kick in the butt and make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing if you see a little bit of a uh, lag time. Last but certainly not least, almost actually probably the whole point of this video is gonna be the tour and the cost. I basically just kind of got the main components that I couldn't really do later. Like I got the taller doors. I think the standard's 10 foot. I got 12 foot cause I was like, I don't want to get this thing built and then like try and bring a boat in here or something like that stupid and have it be like a foot too short. The foundation, we got the concrete, which has a thicker section in the middle. I was actually going to get one small pad, but they had me signed up for two bigger pads which I didn't originally want to do, but as I was thinking about it, I kind of wanted to add it, but luckily I think that there was like a typo in there somewhere. So I did pay for it, but I wanted it. So there's one, it would normally be two concrete sections that go across the middle, but it's just one deeper section all the way across the middle. Obviously we also got the concrete package from them as well. Base price basically on this building, if you wanted it just with all that basic stuff we just talked about, would be 19,000 and $80 if you pay cash and it's like 800 more bucks if you pay with credit. So for 19 grand, you can have the basic garage and then like a lot of that stuff, you can just do yourself later, which is what I'm gonna do. But I did add a couple options later on. I had to think about it. So like the post protectors and skirt board protectors. So like these things, these were an extra $836. It seems like a lot of money and it is. $836 for the post protectors and $579 for the skirt board protectors. It is a lot of money for a piece of plastic, but more or less it's for the warranty that goes along with the structure of the building. So if this shit starts to rot out, they'll come out and they will fix it. The roofing, we did an upgrade. Uh, you can go with a thicker roof for $550. Bucks. Siding upgrade is just over $700. The gutters, I did have to get gutters. Depending on where you are, uh, you may or may not have to get those. They're not out there yet, so I don't know why I'm walking out to show you, but as you can see, we're pretty close to the neighbor's yard. So uh, basically what they told me, here's another county thing, is that I can't have it just dump everywhere because it's so close to the property line. I need to have it dump into my own yard over here. So we're gonna have to figure out how to fix that soup. You know, there's options for a bunch of like dumb stuff, like a workbench for $425, garage door openers for 1200 bucks. You know, I passed on all this stuff. Uh, insulation, they have several different packages, ranging up from a couple hundred dollars to over a thousand dollars. The windows, I got one window. It's actually, 250 or 240 to install electric packages they have listed on here for uh, two grand and 3,500. Those basically include different lights and different services and all that good stuff. But luckily I have a lot of friends who are electricians. So I went ahead and buried this bad boy. We got our uh, conduit here that I buried. So we're gonna actually just get to that later. <laughs> Funny story about the conduit real quick. Cause you guys know how I like to butcher stuff. That's, I think the code for that was two feet below the ground. So we are buried 
but I'm just hoping that the concrete, because it has an elbow that comes out, I'm hoping the concrete isn't that deep that uh, I can't get to the elbow. And if I concreted that in, well, I guess that we're just gonna have to have an ugly hole in the side of the building to run the electric through. That would suck, but uh, that's basically it, guys. I'm gonna put the final price that I ended up paying for these upgrades um, in the on screen here. I don't have it right in this report, but uh, you know, for you, you could say that for 20 grand, maybe a little bit more, throw in a couple thousand dollars of wiggle room just to be safe. You know, you always want to make sure you have a little bit extra when going into a project like this. But say for 20 grand, give or take a few thousand dollars, you could have a 900 square foot garage. And my thought process here was, you know, I think that my current, I know, I know, I agree. My current garage is much more shallower than this. So we'll have about an extra 10 feet up front to do toolboxes, to do, I don't know, maybe I'll throw a couch in here. Just kind of have a place to hang out. We might do like a loft. I did also go with 14 foot ceilings, which bumped the cost up a little bit. Um, you know, I want to have plenty of room. You can see how tall I am, six foot five in the flesh. So if I'm standing under my truck, which is about another five feet, we're going to be at 11 foot. So I just want to make sure there's some room up there. Maybe I'll build a loft on one side or something like that. I don't know, maybe I'll build a loft across the back. I just had to get everything in here and see how it is. I just wanted to give you guys the rundown. Sorry, I keep standing weird, my arm's getting tired. I wanted to give you the rundown of what something like this costs, what you can get into something like this for, and uh, give you guys that insight. So thank you very much for watching. This has been Big Clive 34 If you enjoyed this video or got any information out of it, please smack the like button, and as always, subscribe below. If you have any questions, I will try and answer them in the comments section below. Uh, that's about all I got, guys, so I'll catch you next time.